follow-up question? Well, I, I think the key is having the participants engaged in the meeting, having right. them involved. And uh, if it's a brainstorming meeting, uh, even more important is having the expectation that the people use their creativity, you know, wanting their ideas, wanting their involvement. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say the expectation of their involvement is very important. Engaged is a really important word, isn't it? And, and that means so many different things to so many people, but it's just having them interested. Yeah, absolutely, and giving them a license to share their ideas. And uh, you know, I think one of the reasons that some meetings are less, um, uh, less successful is that uh, there's not the engagement, there's not the stimulation for the people. Mm. Uh, one of the things that uh, Crown Plaza has done, I'm working with them, uh, we've developed uh, something called the Think Box, and it's a set of tools that a meeting planner uh, can use in a meeting to help get the ideas out of uh, participants in a meeting. And uh, I think it's a real step ahead for uh, the whole meeting industry. Okay, I've got plenty of questions coming in. There's one that's just come in that's a great question for Paul McKenzie Ross at uh, isforprofit.com. And this is really good. Uh, Roger, he says, is there an optimum time scale uh, f to which to en engage your audience? If you're in a meeting, you're running the meeting, how do you go about this with uh, potentially long meetings? Do you split it up into 10 minute chunks or, or do you? Uh, that's a great, a great question. I, I find that uh, the smaller the number of people, uh, typically the longer you can go on. At least that's my experience doing creativity mm -hmm. sessions. If I have uh, a large number of people, I find that longer than an hour and a half is uh, less productive. Uh, but if I have, say, ten or five people, you can go a lot longer. And also, I think it's important to break the meeting up. I think that people get tired of doing just lots of verbal stuff, you know, 20 or 30 minutes at a time. And that's why. Well, here's one of the products that's in the Think Box. It's the amazing ball of wax. And tell, uh, me, tell me this. Well, this is not wax with an X. This is wax, as in a yeah, whack on the side of the head. Yeah, I'm. I'm known. Um, probably my most famous product is the book, a whack on the side of the head, uh -huh. and so it's that kind of whack. And uh, this is a product I came up with a couple of years ago. It's a set of 30 magnetic design blocks, and it's a rhombic triacontahedron. And uh, it's magnetized, and so you can pick it up and you can turn it into a lot of shapes. And uh, there's something about engaging one's hands and eyes that really stimulates a lot of brain activity. And so by making shapes and doing some of the exercises that come with this, uh, participants... Um, well, it's like what um, visual do doodling, if you will. So, so visual doodling, creative doodling. Yeah. It's it's letting your mind Here, wander. Why don't you play it, with yeah, it? Please, I will. Do. I'm going to play okay. with it for some so, time. So, um, so I would, you know, our our question asker, I'd say, um, you know, get yourself a ball of wax and uh, um, get your get your thinking going. But again, it depends on the individual. Uh, but I I find that. Uh, the way I structure my own meetings, I try to have something different every 20 or 30 minutes or so. Uh, I, I collect old TV commercials going back about the last 40 or 50 years, and I'll show these at various times. Uh, uh, sometimes they'll be an exercise, uh, sometimes they'll be something inspirational, but I, I think by varying the content is a great way to get people's creative juices going. Okay, and that means that whoever's running the meeting has got to be creative in the first place. Well, at, at least be aware of some of the things that are involved in the creative process. and. Uh, you know, one of the tools that is part of the uh, the Think Box is another one of my products, uh, the Creative Whack Pack, which is a, a deck of 64 creativity strategies. And this yep. has been real popular. It's been a million seller over the years. Wow. And it has various ideas in card form that uh, the person running the meeting can use to solicit ideas from the people. For example, one of them, uh, one of the creativity strategies is laugh at it. And uh, I found that. Humor is a tremendous creativity tool. Um, if you can laugh at a problem or process or management structure, it frees your mind up from a lot of deeply embedded assumptions and allows you to look at what you're doing in a fresh way. So there are some instructions on this card to engage the, uh, the group in uh, some humorous ways of looking at your business or your product or whatever. And uh, you know, chances are it'll put you in a frame of mind conducive for our, uh, more ideas. Some great ideas there. Um, Amanda, thank you for your question. Uh, a question like many, many other people. Uh, what do people get distracted by most when they're in a meeting? Uh, you know, is, is it just boredom? Uh, well, I think boredom by not having a clear topic, uh, by not having a strong agenda, by not allowing people to participate or having them feel engaged. I, I think those would be things. Uh, uh, I think also when the lights go down, I, I read recently that something there's something like 50 million PowerPoint presentations taking place every day right. and you know that's a tremendous tool but if every meeting is nothing but a PowerPoint presentation the lights go down well that's almost an invitation to go to sleep mm -hmm. so uh, I think 
you know, any activities you can do with the lights on, you know, uh, uh, is, uh, is, is to be commended and helps you uh, be more successful. People being very interested about your motivation here, Roger. What was your inspiration, says Mindy Buckingham, uh, for deciding meetings needing perking up? Were you subjected to a particularly dull presentation yourself? Oh, I think we've all been uh, subjected to uh, that in our, you know, and also classes in school, you know, the same thing. Uh, I just think that um, uh, if you're going to have a successful meeting, you've got to get the people engaged and involved. Mm -hmm. And since my line of business is creativity and uh, stimulating creativity, you don't enhance your ability to be creative by being lectured at. You do yeah. it by doing it, by getting involved. And uh, uh, what they can do with some of the tools in the Think Box uh, is uh, develop uh, some exercises for the people uh, to look at their problems and their projects uh, and uh, generate some ideas. So they are engaging. So. It's being engaging. I know Crown Plaza have been pushing this forward, mm -hmm. and they've, they've got the, th the think box all, all set up there. Suzanne uh, sent a question in, which is uh, to do with men and women. Let's let's spice open the uh, the whole battle of the sexes. Here. Who concentrates better, men or women? Wow, uh, you're going to be in trouble. What am I saying? Yeah, you know, either way I go. Uh, I, I found that both groups were equally creative in my sessions. And uh, <laughs> good answer. You know, it, you know, it depends. I, I think I would say more. Uh, you know, is, is it people um, with uh, the the arts the arts background or the people who are coming in from the sciences? I, I find that. Uh, uh, you know, one strategy that I stress is the idea of look for the second right answer, look for the third right answer, mm -hmm. and uh, I think um, a lot of us, especially those coming through the sciences and perhaps engineering, have learned a kind of thinking where you're taught to look for the one right answer, and that's fine for certain technical problems, but most of uh, the issues we deal with in life have a lot of right answers, and so it's important to go beyond that. Uh, now, give me an example. Here's a simple thing. What is this? What is this? Mark? It's a pen. Okay, that's the first right answer. But if you have the attitude of saying, what's the second right answer here? You say, well, it's a pointer. It's a, a near cleaner. It could be a weapon. You take a self-defense class. This mm -hmm. becomes a weapon. It's an advertising medium. It's a coffee stirrer, a telephone dialer, a hole punch. It's all these things. So. Uh, rather, than, uh, rather than putting in the point of like men and women, it's uh, if you've um, um, had, had training more along the line where you've been taught to look for the one right answer, uh, if things go off the stray, you may, you may have less of a, or more, more challenges with that. Lauren's with a question as well. Lauren wants to know, what are your top tips for staying engaged during a meeting? Um, we've heard all sorts of stories of people even having elastic bands that they ping on their wrist to keep them awake. I mean, that, that's, that's a pretty extreme case of a board meeting. But what would be your tips? Well, I, again, I would say uh, have some exercises. Uh, well, uh, not only creativity exercises, if you can turn uh, the, the topics in the meeting, uh, uh, the issues at hand into things where you're soliciting answers and ideas from the participants. Uh, also, having an expectation on the part of the people who are coming to the meeting to come up with ideas. I, mean, I heard a great idea earlier. A man said that uh, whenever he was uh, told to go to a meeting, uh, he had to, uh, had to come with uh, two creative ideas mm -hmm. every meeting, and he found that he was a lot more engaged and part you know he participated a lot more. So, you know, no matter what it is, people tend to behave in the way that they're expected to. So, if you have the expectation of your people to be creative in the meeting to come up with ideas, they'll generally rewar reward you with that. For what you're saying, it sounds like preparation for not only who's running the meeting, but preparation for the people who are going. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and. Uh, uh, I'm just going on from all of that here, we've got uh, uh, Kelly Sharp who sent a question to us. Kelly, thanks for the question. Uh, some, sometimes in a meeting, especially in creative brainstorms, it comes to a dead end mm -hmm. where, where the discussion stops and you've got to pick it all up again. Have you got any hints or tips for, for opening up new channels for discussion? Because you, you can only go so far with whatever right. it is you're talking about. Uh, there are a variety of things you can do there. One of my favorite ways is to ask what if questions and if you're thinking it's, you know, it, it's if your thinking uh, goes down the same line right here, it's tough to see the good ideas behind you by looking twice as hard at what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. you know, one, one what if question is to ask, uh, what if somebody else had my problem? What if Walt Disney were trying to solve this problem? Or what, what, what if Picasso were trying to solve this problem? Uh, how would um, these people uh, approach it? I see you're having fun with the ball. I just, I just <laughs> can't, but, I can't, you better take this back. No, no, it's, it it's good. You're making uh, making this uh, a lively uh, event right now. Uh, but that gets your thinking out. Another time, uh, the, the one I mentioned earlier too is uh, you know using the humor. This is especially good uh, if your uh, thinking is uh, you know getting stultified. So uh, those are a couple ones. Uh, mm. Oh, here's a here's a juicy one for you. Challenge the rules if you can. It's uh, 
As I see it, there are two sides to innovation. Innovation is constructive. I, I think it's pretty easy to come up with new ideas and new strategies and new solutions. But the challenge in innovation is the de destructive side, and that means letting go of what worked for you uh, two years ago or six months ago or last month it may have solved your problem then, but may not be the best way to deal with what's going on now. So if you could turn that into a... Uh, uh, that's like an breaking the rules, isn't it? Well, it is breaking the rules, and uh, that's something I encourage, well, in a whack on the side of the head, if you will, and using the ball of wax and so on. I, I think that most advances in science, technology, uh, mathematics, uh, architecture, marketing, PR, you name the field, you name the industry, have come about when someone's either challenged the rules or at least uh, temporarily suspended the rules in their imagination. Now, I'm here saying break the rules. I'm not encouraging any of the uh, uh, viewers of this program to do anything that's illegal or immoral or unethical or against the business practices of your group. But uh, again, I think that uh, letting go of what you did in the past is uh, a good way to be uh, creative in the future. So, Lucy's uh, got a question which is about concentration and focus. Uh, it's often lost in meetings where attendees have half an eye on the matter in hand and the other half on their Blackberry, their mobile mm -hmm. phone. Can you suggest how we avoid this situation uh, without banning the Blackberry? Um, because you know, people will still need to have emails, they will still need to have some form of communication right. sometimes. So, so how do we get around that? Well, you know, again, I'd say engage, engage people. And um, I mean, the way I run my own meetings, uh, it, it will be maybe 10 or 12 or 15 minutes of me talking about various principles, ideas, and then turning it right back over to the participants. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if you're uh, uh, trying to solve a problem with four or five of your peers, uh, well, you're going to look pretty silly, you know, going into your BlackBerry or your telephone if you're trying to solve a problem at hand. So again, you know, trying to make it exercise based and also uh, make it, you know, make it relevant. Uh, make it so that oh, this material is worthwhile to the success of this group. And if you're uh, not paying attention or you're doodling around or whatever, you're going to miss out. So uh, yeah. again, I would say you know, make the material interesting if you can. And again, you're having a lot of fun with the ball of wax. Well, I wanted there. to bring this in because you know the, the worry is that someone may just have joined us right now and be looking and say, you know, that presenter's taking no interest at all <laughs> what this poor guy's talking about. He's messing around here. I mean, is, is there a danger that that? I mean, how does this actually work in a meeting? Have you seen people sort of creatively sort of go, got it? Well, they're... they're, they're oh, yeah, I mean, with that tool and other tools like that. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, um, there's something about engaging one's hands and eyes uh, on, on a task that can stimulate brain activity. And, you know, over the last uh, two million years of human evolution, uh, a, a lot of that took place when the hand and the brain were developing together.